everyone. So I. Uh oh, the NSA right, is on our tail. We're being recorded. All righty. So good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Kelly Bayer Derrick. I serve as an assistant to the bishop in the Virginia Synod. And um, this is our Zoom workshop for Power in the Spirit, where we're celebrating the 135th anniversary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Papua New Guinea. Um, fingers crossed, and we'll all say a little prayer and hope that um, our partner, Pastor Keenum Saloy, um, who is in Papua New Guinea, um, he's actually at the church offices in Ley, PNG, outside the office right now, waiting for IT staff <laughs> to come to show up at the office in hopes that he can join us on the Zoom. So he just, uh, he just emailed me again. He's been emailing me for the last 10 minutes or so, just letting me know, and emailed and said, it's almost 8.30, should I just say I've missed out? And I said, no, 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 we'll be gathered together for the next hour. If you get in, please join the Zoom. So he may randomly show up in the middle of our Zoom. I'm, I'm hopeful for that, um, but we'll see whether he is able to join us. So I'm bummed that he's not here, but I, it also speaks to some of what we have to learn about our siblings in PNG and just the challenges of, of electricity and technology and and all of the things. So hopefully he will be with us. But anyway, I am thrilled to have uh, as part of this uh, workshop also Pastor Michael Church and Diane Giesler, um, both of whom were on the trip in 2019 that I was on. And Diane has been our companion synod coordinator for a, a very, very, very long time and has been to PNG more times than I can remember or count. Um, and so can share lots of insights and experience about our time in PNG. But what I wanted to do to start us out was to um, invite us to worship as a, a celebration, just a brief worship service and celebration with our siblings in PNG. Um, so the worship service that we're going to use here is um, actually from there. Uh, one of their two worship book, books, at least one of the two that I have seen. Um, one of the main languages in Papua New Guinea is English. Um, they also speak, um, there, there's hundreds, thousands of, of dialects and languages in PNG. So most people speak um, um, talk Pisin, which is a form of pidgin English, um, and then also learn English in school. So there's a, a pidgin English um, or a pidgin hymnal that we're not going to use because I don't know how to read or speak that uh, very well, um, if at all. I, um, but they do have an English language version that, uh, that I was able to bring a copy home with me when we were in Papua New Guinea two years ago. So we're going to use that service. It's basically their service of the word. They call it the service without communion. Um, and so we'll share that together. In the middle of the service, we are going to sing. I invite you to sing. Um, you're welcome to sing at home or unmute yourself or whatever, but we've got a recording of um, a pigeon version of This Is The Day. We have sung this before. It's a, it's a tune that many of us know already. You know, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. So it's kind of easy to sing along to, but um, I'll play the recording actually when the, the pastors and deacons of the Virginia Synod were gathered together. Um, October of 2019. We recorded that and shared the recording with our siblings in PNG as a way of just strengthening that relationship. So we'll be able to hear it and the pigeon words will be on the screen and uh, we'll go through and we'll pronounce it and we'll just, we'll give it a whirl. It'll be fun. Um, so we're going to start with worship. I'm hopefully going to be able to share my screen. I often don't do this well. Um, and share the wrong screen and things like that. So let's hope this works. All right. And I can also make this bigger. Can someone give me a yep. thumbs up or a yes, you can see this. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right, perfect. And I'm also gonna pause for a second and make sure that I have um, share sound so that when we get to the video, um, 
we'll have that ready. Let me make sure I have the video queued up. Okay. All right. So this is um, this is the 135th anniversary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Papua New Guinea. Today, actually, July 12th is the anniversary date. So it's perfect. It worked out to be on this day while we were gathered together um, for Power in the Spirit. So it's a perfect day for us to um, together. So Pastor Michael Church is going to help lead the worship service uh, with me. You are welcome to unmute yourself and speak the bold parts. You're also welcome to keep yourself muted if you'd like to. Um, Pastor Colleen Montgomery is at least going to be a designated responder. So we have people responding. We have at least someone speaking responses. So, all right. We begin calling upon the name of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. glad in it. All right, we continue with confession. Friends in the Lord, let us come to God, our loving Father, bringing to God all our sins. God is merciful and ready to forgive. Mighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are full of sin and in need of your forgiveness. We have sinned in many ways, in our thinking, our speaking, and our doing. We look to you alone for help and beg for your mercy. Loving Father, Loving Father. Loving Father. You gave, you gave your, your only, only son, son, Jesus, to die, die for us. For his, for his sake, sake, accept us and forgive us. By the power, by the power of your spirit, spirit renew, renew us and strengthen us, so that, so that we, we may love you more, you more and serve you better. better. God is our loving Father, who has already seen our need and has sent Jesus to die in our place. Again, Jesus tells us, your sins are forgiven. Believe God's promise, receive God's peace, and live as God's people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory, to Glory to you, O Lord. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Praise to you, you O Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay, y'all, so this is our song of the day. I'm gonna open up the recording in a second, but I'm just gonna, um, I'll, I'll speak out loud how you pronounce the words. Um, I've said to several people, um, for me, um, talk piss in the, the pidgin language is one that when I look at it, it, I don't understand it as well, but when I hear it, it starts to make a lot more sense to me. Um, so Hopefully, as you hear it, it'll make a little, it, you know, you may hear some uh, references to English or just to hear to the words that we'll say. So, again, this is this is the day um, it, to read the talk person out loud. Dispel a day, dispel a day, God he given me, God he given me. 
me ama mas, me ama mas, God stop one time you, God stop one time me. Dispel a day, God he given me, me ama mas, God stop one time you. Dispel a day, dispel a day, God give him you me. All right, let me get the video open here. And if it shows up here, I'm going to move it, hopefully. So I'm still sharing. You can still see the words, right, y'all? No. Uh, yeah. I want to stand up. Oh. Can you see the words that are there on the screen? I didn't change this the, to a different page. OK, good. All right, now tell me if you can hear the words or hear the song sure, you're singing. We're gonna try it again. We're gonna wanna stand up. All right, you can hear the words. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Sure, let's stand. Well done, y'all. <laughs> I hope that worked. <laughs> All right. Well, let me make sure I'm going back to the email because Pastor Keenum is still emailing me. I'm checking it while we're going. Okay. We're going to continue worship then. Um, again, as uh, we do in our services here in the ELCA after we're the hymn of the day with the offering. We bring our gifts to God. God, our Father, with thanksgiving for your many gifts to us, we offer ourselves to you. Take, Take our, our bodies and minds, and our, our work time and, and free, free time, time our, our dealings, dealings with others, with, others, with family and friends. friends. Take our, Take our dreams and our doubts, our, doubts, our, hopes, our hopes and our fears. Accept, Accept us and use us in the work of your kingdom. Amen. All right. Pastor Michael. Trusting in the Holy Spirit, who knows our needs, prays with us and through us. And when we have no words for us, let us pray. We give thanks to you, to the members and clergy of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, in Papua New Guinea. For those who had the vision to begin its life, for those who sustain its present ministry, for Bishop Jack Arami, for all pastors and leaders of the church, and those who will carry its mission forward. God of mercy. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the members and ministry of the New Guinea Islands District of the ELCPNG, our companion synod in the ministry of the gospel. We lift to you the district president, Pastor Toby Eliezer, and all pastors and leaders in the church. We pray for all of our sisters, brothers, and siblings in Christ in the New Guinea Islands who share the gospel in their communities. We give thanks to you for the partnership we share. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, pleading for mercy and healing, for those places and peoples torn by ancient animosities or terrorized by new fears, those devastated by drought or disease, those crushed by poverty, oppression or war, and those consumed by power, wealth or greed. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For whom else and for what else shall we pray? I invite you, if you'd like, yeah, to unmute yourself and speak whatever prayers you would like to. God, show mercy to the people of Haiti in their time of need.
God, please be with the people of British Columbia after that horrible wildfire that destroyed a whole village. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yeah. Let us pray. You are gracious and merciful, O God, slow to anger, rich in love. Receive our prayers as you have promised and uphold us by your spirit until all things mended by your mercy are made whole and well in you through Jesus Christ, our healer and our hope. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come. your, your will, will be done, be done on, earth on earth as in heaven. As in heaven. Give, Give us today, today our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins as we, as we forgive those who sin against, who sin against us. us. Save us from, from the time of trial, trial. Deliver us and deliver us from evil. From evil. For, the For the kingdom, kingdom the power, power and the glory are yours, are yours. Now, now and now forever. forever. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, y'all. All right. I am now also going to share my screen again just to give you a little bit of intro info um, about Papua New Guinea, and then we'll um, open it up for discussion, questions, things like that. And again, I'm still crossing my fingers that Pastor Keenan will be able to be with us. We shall see. See, so, all right. Um, some of what I've got to share with you. Um, whoops, let me make sure. Let me put this in share mode. Come on. Oh, not that mode. Present mode. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> right. With the number of times we've all done Zoom, right? This is still we still forget. Okay. So um, some of the pictures that I've got for you are um, from the trip that the Virginia Synod took in 2019, um, in August, September 2019 to um, Papua New Guinea. So you can see there were four of us who went from Virginia, as I mentioned, three of us are on uh, this Zoom, myself, um, Pastor Michael Church and, and Diane Giesler, and then Matt Wortman also traveled uh, with us. So. Just some info and this, Pastor Colleen Montgomery was asking a little bit about this. So there are global companion synods. Um, every um, Virginia, e, every ELCA synod has at least one global companion. Um, many have more than one. We in Virginia just have one, um, but they serve as it says there is like concrete expressions, ways that we can live out being um, church together um, in a global way. Um, there's 140 Lutheran member churches of the Lutheran World Federation, so there's lots of ways for us to be in companion with each other, and there's more than 120 companion synod relationships. So in Papua New Guinea, there are four ELCA synods that have a relationship with four districts in the ELC p &G. This is a picture of all of us gathered um, at the church offices, perhaps even not too far from where, where Pastor Keenum is is standing right now, so you have an idea of where he is. This is outside of the church offices um, in Ley, Papua New Guinea. Um, so let's see if you can, if it's big enough. This is Pastor Keenum back here, if you can see my pointer um, there. And Kennedy, uh, there, wait, there's Kennedy, and there is Wendy, who are some of our companions um, from the Islands District. Um, but we were all gathered together in 2019, the uh, representatives from the Virginia Synod, the North Carolina Synod, the Central State Synod, uh, which is Missouri and Kansas, and the Northwest Lower Michigan Synod, which is the mitten of Michigan, except for Metro Detroit. Um, and we were gathered with each of our four companions um, and representatives from the uh, national church offices there in Papua New Guinea. So. 
So that's a part of our expression of this. And we work together in accompaniment, walking together, living together. So we pray for each other. We hope um, as we uh, are today trying to learn about each other, to support each other in mission and ministry. Um, we've had a lot of communication actually during COVID, um, trying to just keep each other in prayer, see how things are going, um, maintaining connections via email mostly is how we communicate. But we have tried um, to uh, do some video here that we can upload to YouTube, or they can do video there that they can upload to YouTube, and then we can uh, view that um, with each other. So again, just trying to strengthen the relationship. So again, our companion is the New Guinea Islands District. Um, so the... Papua New Guinea, this is one of the questions that I think we often get is where is PNG? <laughs> so this is the South Pacific. Um, there's Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea is an island nation just north of Australia. Um, the, the big island is um, half of the, the, the eastern half of the island of Papua, but then it's also um, lots and lots and lots of islands around. And our particular um, district is these island districts out here. The islands, um, the largest islands are New Britain and New Ireland, but then there's also other islands um, scattered about. So that's where we went. And this is where Pastor Keenum is. Here in Ley is where the church offices are. Um, Port Moresby is the capital and largest city. And there's a lot of mountains. It's just a very, 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 very mountainous place. Um, so, um, the church in Papua New Guinea um, is, um, according to the Lutheran World Federation numbers, 1.8 million Lutherans um, in the ELC PNG. By comparison, y'all, the Lutheran World Federation numbers for the ELCA is about 3.7 million, maybe a little less than that, 3.4 million. So there's about half as many Lutherans in Papua New Guinea as there are in the ELCA and in PNG that makes up 20% of the population. 20% uh, of the population is Lutheran. Um, so it's a very significant, the second largest Christian denomination in all of Papua New Guinea. Um, so it's a very, very significant denomination in the life of uh, the country there in PNG. There's 2,800 pastors um, and their head bishop there uh, is the Reverend Jack Arame. That would be similar to the way that we in um, Virginia would, or in the ELCA would talk about our presiding bishop. Um, they call him their head bishop. And that is uh, part of our trip. You can see Pastor Michael and Matt having some dinner with Bishop Arame um, there in PNG. Um, so, and the, I've mentioned the district. So the ELC PNG has 17 districts. Um, which are like ELCA synods. So it's their smaller geographic regions. Each district is divided into circuits. So in, in Virginia, in the Virginia Synod, we would call those smaller geographic areas conferences. In the ELC PNG, they call them circuits. Um, each district is led by a district president, um, which would be like our synod bishop. So the structure is very similar. We just use different words to speak about them. So this is our um, our companion synods, um, our companion synods uh, district president. This is Pastor Toby Eliaser and his family. Um, three of his four children, right, Diane? He has four kids, five. Yeah, but um, actually, I think the smaller one is a granddaughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember, I know his daughter was away. It's one of his daughters was away at school. Yeah. Um, at least but that's, two of them were actually. So, okay. Um, yeah. That's the son. Oh gosh. Name escapes me and um, daughter on the left in the red. Yeah. And you remember his wife's name? When we pray for them, I always pray. Do you, um, you know, Michael, do you know his wife's name? I do. Um, Bien Fong, and um, she just goes by Bien. Bien. Bien, Bien, yeah. Awesome, thank you. It means, it means roughly precious, beloved thing. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh! All right, so Pastor Keenum is not with us, but one of the things that I'm glad I dropped this in just in case. So this is Pastor Keenum Saloy in 
April, he actually recorded greetings to the Virginia Synod for Easter that were included in our Easter worship service. So hopefully I've got the sound set. I've, I've said I'm sharing sound. So hopefully you'll be able to hear him share some greetings here, even though he can't isn't with us live. Different in Christ. Can y'all hear that? Is it a little? Yes. Okay. My name is Pastor Kinim Siloy. Easter greetings to you from Papua New Guinea. May your Easter be filled with endless love, joy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May you and your families be blessed as you celebrate the true meaning of Easter. From the reflection of Good Friday to the joy of Easter Sunday and the promise of eternal life. Let us join together to praise the Lord whose divine sacrifice cleanses us from all our sins. Happy Easter to you all. God bless. Awesome. So I, um, I'm actually going to ask Pastor Colleen Montgomery because I don't multitask very well in Zoom um, to drop into the chat the worship service. Um, the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Easter, the Virginia Synod put together a worship service um, that was uh, that used songs from Papua New Guinea that included Pastor Keenum's greetings. Um, and you can uh, view that that's on our Global Companion Synod webpage of the Synod website, um, along with some other video and things like that. So let's see if Pastor Keenum has responded. Okay. Um, so that is, that's Pastor Keenum Soloy. Again, fingers crossed, maybe in the next, oh, thank you, Pastor Colleen, drop that in the chat if you want to view that at any point. And there's lots of other info about PNG there. Um, so the, traveling to the, the islands was magnificent. Um, and what I really want to get to is we, let's see, we worshiped and we visited congregations. So um, they had big celebrations in 2017, um, celebrating the 500th anniversary of the, um, of the Reformation. Um, and Pastor Michael put a really great video together that I want to, we also have sister congregations, um, so we can circle back and talk about some of those, but I wanted to, whoops, where, well, I wanted to get to the video that you made for us, Michael. p and stunningly beautiful too, y'all. All right. So I wanted to share this video and then we can see if there's questions or things that other people want to talk about or share about. Um, but this is just a video that helps talk about our relationship together. So we'll play this. Papua New Guinea, visitors are often greeted with a sing-sing. This is a folk celebration like this one. Many congregations in Papua New Guinea operate primary or middle schools. As a companion synod, we in Virginia have helped make education affordable for pastors and church workers. We have also assisted with a malaria reduction campaign and have plans to help erect a new headquarters for the New Guinea Islands District. But this partnership is about more than projects. 
It is about people and prayer and our abiding friendship with a nation possessed of a strong Christian faith and a church with a powerful Lutheran identity. Now we praise you. Thank you, Pastor Michael, for creating that and uh, for uh, sharing those words and the and the story of P and G. So I wanted to just that gave you just a little bit of an intro. Um, the The church's uh, anniversary is, like I said, it's today. Um, the church was founded by German missionaries um, who came to the. Um, Finschaffen area um, on the big island first, um, bringing the gospel with them. Um, my, my recollection, and Diane and Michael, you can speak to this too, is there's a, as you mentioned in the video, Michael, there's a really strong Lutheran presence. Um, very, they're very proud of their Lutheran heritage and very, very proud of and, and faithful to the gospel and sharing the gospel with, in the Lutheran witness in PNG. Um, and so the German missionaries came um, and brought the Lutheran heritage to PNG 135 years ago, whenever that was. I don't do math that quickly in my head, whatever 2021 minus 135 is. Um, and 18 something. <laughs> right? 18 something. Um, my husband, David, is on this call and could probably do, has probably already done the math. Did you already do the math, David? <laughs> you want to? Okay. <laughs> Whatever the year was. Okay. But um, so that the Lutheran heritage brought there and um, as, uh, as the video shared, you know, it's really an important part of their heritage. Um, there's Lutherans all over the islands now. Many of the Lutherans in the islands district um, have come from other parts of PNG and came out to the islands. Um, there's lots of oil palm plantations out on the islands and have come out to work out on uh, originally came or you know generations back so there's lots of diversity of language and culture out in the islands um, as uh, as they've gotten as they brought their own culture from the various parts of png where they came from so 1886 <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you david we know it was 18 18 something i could do that that well so um, so yeah, I, I want to just offer um, any questions, comments, anything you want to ask about, know about, share about uh, Papua New Guinea. Um, anybody have questions about PNG or the church or our companion relationship or anything? How did the islands fare with COVID? I can imagine an island being kind of protected but also can imagine that if it gets onto the island, it could be devastating. Yeah. Um, so I had emailed several times to Pastor Keenum. So Pastor Keenum is the like uh, part of one of his roles is the companion coordinator. So he would uh, speak on, you know, for the whole of the church. Pastor Toby also would respond and had emailed them some. I don't know, Diane and Michael, if you had responded some. I, I heard of kind of both of those things, Bill, that um, for a long time, the COVID numbers were relatively low because it, they are islands. And so there was um, some isolation, um, but there were also that one of the uh, challenges that went with that was they also had really, really low levels of vaccinations. So they still have that challenge. Um, so Australia, for instance, this was six months ago, Australia was sending over thousands of COVID vaccines because they didn't have enough vaccinations, even for frontline health workers to be able to be fully vaccinated. So there were real challenges with there being lower levels of COVID, but also significantly uh, less access to vaccinations. Um, and I was just on a meeting two weeks ago, maybe with the other companion synods, we all got together to have a meeting um, with the ELCA's coordinator. And one of the things that he asked us to do was to share our stories of being vaccinated because some of the church leadership, 
not not most of them, but some of the church leadership were actively speaking against vaccinations. Mm. Um, and so the church, like their their head bishop and uh, district presidents were trying to encourage everyone to be vaccinated and trying to get those folks who were speaking against vaccinations to stop doing that because it wasn't as helpful. So they wanted us to share like that we've been vaccinated, that, you know, I'm, I feel healthy every day. Um, so the numbers, they've had significant issues with COVID, but again, most of it has to do with limited access to vaccinations um, on the island. And then the, with the Delta variant and other variants that are so, um, are spreading so quickly. That's what I had heard. Diane or Michael, I don't know if you've heard additional Your information. information is info. far more recent than mine. Okay. Well, at, at one time, you know, Pastor Toby said things were on the rise in the New Guinea Islands district. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, you know, they did shut down a lot of travel um, and um, schools, uh, Mm -hmm. closed down for a month and six weeks at a time I think at least on two occasions in the islands district um I think the cities were pretty hard hit but actually the New Guinea Islands um were too to some extent and it has to do because there's there um there's a lot of trade that goes on in the islands and there's now hundreds of miles of, of roadway. So um, there was only so much restricting they could do. So, you know, they, they had some issues, that's for sure. Um, I haven't heard anything really recently. So other than what you shared that, you know, Australia is coming to their aid. Right. Um, So yeah, we definitely invite and get, prayers. And you get into the distribution too. Right. You know, they have the vaccines, but um, getting it to everywhere, I'm sure is challenging. Yeah, Papua New Guinea is exceedingly mountainous. Um, so even, even if you're not out in the islands, which when we were out in the islands, we basically, there were very few places we could drive to. We had to fly from from certain areas to other areas because you're so spread out and you're on islands. So you can't drive from one island to another. But even on the big island, they're so mountainous that people would have to fly from one place to another. And, and a lot of those, the, the mountainous aspects of it make it very, very isolated. Um, so as Diane was saying, you know, there's not always roads to be able to get vaccinations where they need to be um, deep into the uh, isolated areas up in the mountains. and um, in certain parts of the islands. So we you know if they got prayers the for them. If they, if they were able to get vaccines to the the islands district, there's a really pretty good network of um, of clinics located throughout um, well New Britain, New Britain um, province for sure. So right. Wanna, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Um, I actually, I, I want to start off with two questions. The first mm -hmm. is, how, do, how does that church align with the ELCA in terms of things as how we read the Bible, uh, women's ordination, things like that? Mm -hmm. um, and then the second question, at the end of Michael's very compelling video, it said, be sure to um, donate to... Um, to the ELCA um, world, but it also said consider a companion congregation. Yes. Do we have companion congregations with our companion synod. Yes. So let's speak I'll to the you. second one first. Um, Michael, you want to speak to your relationship with Good Shepherd? Sure. I'd be happy to. So it was one of the first things I learned when I got to Virginia was that we had the companion synod relationship. What I did not know until Pastor Toby was standing in our fellowship hall at our savior was that we were his companion congregation. 
Um, and what had happened is that, and I think this happened synod-wide, is that churches entered into these relationships and then over the years with changes of pastors, changes of councils, the information got lost. So, you know, since, since his visit, I've been able, you know, Pastor Toby and I have stayed in touch and, and I've done a, as much as I possibly can to, to highlight the relationship, including, including them in our prayers virtually every single Sunday. Um, and, and I will tell you that when I visited, they were also clearly very, very keenly aware of the companionship and, and had made preparations accordingly. And we're, we're just, we're really excited. To, to send messages back to our savior. But, and we talked about this, several of us, and discovered that a lot of churches in Virginia may not realize that they are at least nominally companions with a church in the New Guinea Islands district. Is there a list just in case some of us need to know if we have a companion congregation? I don't have it. I've, I've asked the same question. I can put together, um, it's really not as many as you would think. I'm going to say it's maybe only oh, between eight and 12 congregations in the, here in Virginia, Synod, indicated interest in having um, a companion congregation. And there was sort of, it was somewhat official. Um, however, a good number of those, it just never followed through um, with communication. Um, I mean, there's been such an improvement in the last 20 years since, the, you know, that started done. where now I think things could take off, but the ability to really have um, correspondence was so difficult that there's just a handful. Um, I could name them on one hand. Um, I will say even now communication is very challenging, but yeah, it's still challenging. obviously the it's internet has made it, you know, has, right, right. has completely transformed it. Um, my congregation, Zion Lutheran in Floyd is one of them. Um, our connections have been really sketchy. And um, one of the interesting things is our companion is like the lead church in a parish over there and just out of the blue like six months ago we started hearing from one of the congregations within that parish who got who are just growing fast and gung-ho so just out of the blue you know we, we get an email they somehow got a hold of my email um, from a congregation within this parish that we don't know very much about at all but we've been having some back and forth uh, discussion and prayers and all that so it may be a very ripe time to look at you know to look at this as a possibility going forward um, yeah so paul if saint peter or um if any of your congregations are interested in having a sister congregation you can certainly reach out to to me um and i can reach out to pastor toby and um and that's how we can you know work work those relationships as they figure out what congregations may not already have a partner or something. And we would love to be able to strengthen the relationship that way. I wanna to hasten to say though, when I shared this information with Pastor Toby that this particular congregation within a fairly sizable parish reached out to us, his recommendation was to just to stay more connected with the original congregation the large this like the senior church in this parish um versus getting involved with um a smaller congregation at this time in other words it really i think he feels there's a need for coordination um so before we just go off crazy <laughs> but it presents the opportunity diane you know if and paul like Clearly, there's some congregations that want to be in, in relationship with congregations oh, yeah. in the Virginia Synod. So if your congregation would like to um, be in relationship, 
I think it would be really exciting to develop some of those partnerships. Um, and, and knowing, as we've already talked about some, like the challenges of communication. So we, you know, we can email, um, we can do some YouTube posting a video. That's the best way of sharing things, like sharing things in, uh, like attaching videos and things like that. Like it doesn't, it often doesn't work. Even Pastor Toby doesn't have a smartphone that he's not checking his email on his phone. Um, but he, you know, we, we can communicate uh, better than we used to, but differently than the way we might be used to communicating here in the States. And one of the things we noticed a lot was um, as we went out and about was the number of solar charging stations for like cell phones and things like that, that often, you know, you're, when you're out in remote areas where there's not electricity, the, there would be, <laughs> there would be little so, solar panels. Right. And, um, and just to put that, let me put that in context because the pictures may not have really shown some of the really remote areas that we saw, but my most vivid memory of this is we were in a little village that's clustered around uh, a very small, very small brand new wood frame church, but the houses are, are literally made out of woven palm leaves. Um, the, the only toilet that we saw was literally a hole in the ground with some, some black plastic wrapped, wrapped around it on sticks. Um, and people are talking on their cell phones. And we were going, <laughs> now how is this? And then that was the first time I really noticed right. a solar charging station up on somebody's grass roof. I mean, it's, it's an amazingly different environment and technology is, is the, the context for technology is so different from what we're accustomed to as for everything else. It was it's really stunning. Yeah. I, I will say that this congregation that we hear from, it's, it's not a pastor, it's a member of the congregation, perhaps a councilman who, who is emailing with his phone. So he must have a smart phone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it's, it's really pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and, he, and, and he even knows how to attach pictures. He, he has exchanged pictures with us. Awesome. Well, I, I'm getting, getting ready to answer your first question, Paul, but I also just dropped in the chat, um, the Facebook page for the um, Evangelical Lutheran Church in Papua New Guinea, where several people have been sharing posts of uh, pictures and things like that from the celebrations of uh, what they call um, ELC PNG Sunday. So um, their celebrations this past Sunday for the anniversary, um, 135 years. So they're, it's pretty cool pictures um, to just see what they've, what they've been doing in celebration. Um, in various parts of uh, of the islands, and most most of it is around where the church began in Finshofen um, area. Um, and to speak, I, I Diane or Michael, you may be able to speak more to like I don't know that we've had significant conversations around around how we read the Bible and um, things like that. It, but they do. So there is another Lutheran church in the eel in the in png that is more um that is less like the elca more kind of a probably missouri synod specifically it's an lcms daughter church yes. and it aligns with the lcms right. that's that's um, so the elc png yeah. is going to be more aligned um theologically and interpretively with the elca um they have uh they have past uh, the ordination of women, they're working on it. Um, they have had women graduate from seminary um, and are, are moving in the direction of having women serve as pastors. Um, so uh, to answer those two specific questions, um, that's very exciting to, well, to me, it was exciting. One of, one of the things of, that was- Okay. Go ahead. No, I, no, I was, was going to say one, of, one of my one of my gifts, one of the great joys of my ministry was being able to preach in Papua New Guinea, um, because we're we're when we went in 2019, the presiding bishop, Bishop Jack Arame, had specifically asked for women who pastors to be on that trip, in part because he was 
uh, introduce, trying to strengthen and lift up the ordination of women. So he specifically asked for women to who are pastors to be on the trip. And two of us were there and we each preached in our districts where we were. And both of us and the, you know, our companions realized that we were the first women pastors to ever preach in each of those districts, um, which was super cool. It was just an honor. And, you know, they, they were just very gracious and um, awesome, but it was pretty cool. So. Did they let you preside? Um, I did not preside, but at that worship service where when Nobody I preached, did. it was, it, there was no Eucharist. It was a service of the word. Did we I, have Eucharist at any? No, not and, one time. Trust me, I was I was waiting with bated breath. Yeah, I was going to say we didn't the, uh, either. Surgical story, and I was really psyched to see how. Yeah, I'm yeah, we worshipped because we even worshipped in lay in one of the main congregations in where the church headquarters are. The first Sunday we were there, and we didn't have Eucharist at that worship service either. Beautiful, so. beautiful, sir. Elegant service. Mm -hmm. Excellent sermon by the by the. Pastor Low side, but yeah, no, you, Chris. I was very yeah. disappointed. Little piece of liturgical trivia that probably won't mean much to most of you, but so the the specific German missionaries who landed here in Fitchhafen uh, were what we in America call Lehrer men. They had been trained by Wilhelm Lehrer in Neuendettelsau in Bavaria, which means that the liturgical materials they brought over with them were the same ones that were used widely in the Midwest, up and down, up and down the Midwest at exactly the same period. So that to a large degree, um, uh, American Lutheran, and Lurie's influence is tremendous, American Lutheran liturgical history and uh, PNG Lutheran liturgical history share a common, a common sort of important data point. So that one of my gifts for Pastor Toby was a little book English translation of some of Lear's liturgies. Here, here's something I think is really, really cool. And that I think made a big difference in um, the success of the Lutheran church, let's say. Senior Fleurel, the Reverend Fleurel, who was the, that first German missionary, he waited 13 years before there was the first baptism and I think what what is the positive not of course it's positive that there was a baptism but the fact that nothing was like just pushed on them that he he um, honored their culture and looked for ways where there'd be connections you know, with, with Christianity. And, um, and once the baptism started, then, you know, it, 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 it took off <laughs> big time, but it was that patience and the teaching um, that I think made a big difference that a lot of churches, a lot of um, denominations have made the mistake of being too pushy when they've gone into new new frontiers so i had a, a question kind of about that I, mm -hmm. I was just googling all this earlier because i was curious what was the first denomination of course it's catholicism uh, <laughs> but it's, it's not like 27 percent. so um i'm curious because you know again wikipedia if you read it says something like um the christian faith is combined with more traditional religions in Papua New Guinea. So I was curious, like, are there any festivals or rituals or things that are incorporated that aren't strictly Lutheran, but that, you know, are part of the church now? If there are, we didn't see any real clear evidence of them. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot we didn't see. Uh, so it's hard to know. What we did see a lot of were those folk celebrations, mm -hmm. like the ones that were included in the video. And that, that piece of video is really much better if you're not seeing it on Zoom. People actually move. Um, so there is a very, very lively sense of you know, traditional, traditional heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, most of the people 
most people still identify with their home province, whatever it is, mm-hmm. even if they've moved to some other part of the country and with its folkways. Um, but I, I didn't see any evidence of, you know, any sort of syncretism or even in yeah. that kind of, you know, deep enculturation. Uh, and I would have, I would have been very interested in that. Mm-hmm. I'd love, I'd love to know more. I mean, I, but you'd have to have to spend a lot more time there to know. All right, thank they, you. There's a couple of spots where they would comment in some of the pictures even that are on the celebrations from the this year's anniversary are being very respectful of like uh, village chiefs and being able to connect in when you're out in the villages with those who, um, with the, the traditional leaders of the community. But uh, yeah, I would echo Michael that not, not really seeing any, any syncretism of those uh, religious traditions from the, but there, there was definitely a, uh, an, a respect and honoring of the uh, traditional leadership and traditional culture. And noticing some of the differences in where we were, you know, certain areas we were, there were lots of uh, shells and beads and things like that. In other areas, there were things made more with the grasses and things like that, depending on where we were, but it didn't feel like it was a religious celebration. It was more of honoring of various cultural traditions. Yeah. Um, In fact, the the bilam or the string bags that the the women carry, um, so many of the patterns are traced directly to a a very specific area of Papua New Guinea and and language. And it's um, similarly too, there a lot of women are tattooed, face tattooed we didn't see that or very little of that, but um, it does. And I also wonder if our experience would be different if we had been in the highlands, Mm -hmm. which is from everything everyone's ever Mm -hmm. told me a lot wilder and woolier. Yeah. And the highlands is kind of on the main island, the, as it indicates, kind of up and way up into the mountains in the highlands, which are far more isolated Um, and you have much more of the um, kind of traditional cultures um, present. And as as Michael said, you get a lot of blending of cultures and traditions on the islands because people have moved there from lots of different places. Um, So, okay, I'm noticing y'all, I'm I'm scanning one of these pictures. I love that one of the pictures that they've got posted on the EELS, on the Facebook page is like of the charter members of the one parish like it just like it it just reminds me of like celebrations that i would i've been at in congregations in the virginia synod where you honor those who are charter members and they've got the folks who are you know um says uh you know just celebrating kind of the emotional uh connection to the charter members of this particular parish this is uh um anyway in the rapinka circuit so it's kind of cool um, all right, it's 7.30, which means we're about to start for worship. Any final questions or anything um, about uh, the ELCPNG um, that anybody has? Thank you, this was wonderful. Yeah, again, I invite your prayers and celebrations. If you're interested in your congregation having a sister congregation, um, you can email me. Um, I, my email address, bayerderek at vasynod.org. It's also on the Synod's website. but. Um, I really recommend that. Yeah, I'll just say I'll I'll testify. And and I will dig back into my files and come up with a list. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Colleen. All right, I invite you. You can leave this room, go back to the main room where we have worship starting. Probably I don't know how to do that. (laughs) If you hover over the screen.